This is a baby kangaroo. Not as cute as me. And this is a baby panda. Not as cute as me. Here we see a baby rhinoceros. Definitely not as cute as me. <laughs> I love watching nature films on TV. Remind me when you're leaving, Nermal. Oh, and feel free to use the word now in your answer. <laughs> a few more weeks. What? Oh, I can't take this anymore, Odie. Prolonged exposure to Nermal is hazardous to my health. Uh -huh. Oh, look, 27 baby penguins. None of them as cute as me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't forget to join us tomorrow in the nationwide search for America's cutest cat. In every big city, contestants are already lining up for a chance to win this year's cutest cat trophy. Cutest cat trophy? Wow! I haven't won a cutest cat trophy since... Tuesday. And the winning cat will also receive an all-expense paid six-month vacation in Greenland! Greenland? Normal in Greenland? Far, far away in... How far, far away is Greenland? I don't know. Never mind. It's got to be far enough away. <laughs> Six months without normal. I have got to win that contest. Yes, you have got to win that contest. Well, what are you waiting for, normal? Let's get you in here. There are flights for Greenland leaving every hour. Okay. I'm all entered in the contest tomorrow, and I'm gonna win. And do you know why, Garfield? Of course, because you're the cutest cat in the whole town. Soon to be the cutest cat in Greenland. I take my responsibility as judge seriously. I have a chance to set trends, to influence public taste. I want to redefine what cute is. Fashions change, styles change, cute must change. I am so bored with what passes for cute. Things like, hmm. <laughs> huh? The opposite of that, that will be the new cute. The opposite of cute? How can I be the opposite of cute? Do you know what the opposite of cute is, Garfield? You. <laughs> Let's face it, I'll never win this contest. I'll never win any contest. I might as well just stay home and watch TV all day. At your house. No! <laughs> you can't give up now, Nermal. Think of the glory. Think of the pride. Think of six months away in Greenland. But cute is all I got. How can I possibly become uncute? I can teach it to you before the competition tomorrow, but you've got to work hard. There's no time to waste. <laughs> All right, let's start with manners, shall we? We have to get rid of them. Show me how you eat lasagna. No, 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 no. Too cute. First, you're going to have to do away with the silverware. <laughs> Watch and learn, Nermal. This is the uncute way to eat lasagna. Garfield, <sighs> careful. Some of that's actually getting in your mouth. That was a good one. Your turn, Nermal. Huh? Too neat. It needs something uncute, something disgusting even. I know, doggy tongue. Odie, front and center. Oh, stop, Odie, stop, look, stop. Oh, oh, please make it stop. <laughs> licking your face like that. Nermal, you are so cute. Uh, this is going to take longer than I thought. Nermal, do you know how to play with one of these? <laughs> sure. I hope none of you are trying to eat while you watch this. 
Wrong, wrong, wrong. And in that order, let me show you what an uncute cat does with the ball. You use them to occupy small-minded dogs. Cody, fetch. That wasn't cute. <laughs> oh, Normal and Odie, that's so cute. <laughs> Playing hide and seek in the trash cans like that. In fact, everything you do is so cute, Normal. I'm doomed. Doomed to a life of eternal cuteness. I just can't not be cute. You can and you will. Your trip to Greenland and my peace and quiet depend on it. A little of this. Oh, and this is disgusting. So is this? Now mix well. Garfield, what are you doing? I'm giving you an uncute makeover. This, Nermal, is the final threshold on your journey into the land of uncute. Now you are ready. Uh, at least we're a little flowery deodorant. No. Oh, cute, cute. Very cute. Repulsively cute. I want to see that new kind of cute. The kind that defies convention. The kind that says, I am so cute, I am not afraid to be uncute. Aww. I don't get it either, but he's the judge. Show him what you got, Nermal. <laughs> and keep your eyes on the prize. I'll keep mine on that plane ticket to Greenland. <laughs> I see my buffet. It smells like 37 items including carved prime rib, medium rare, sweet potatoes, and chocolate raspberry souffle. <laughs> Odie, you keep an eye on what's his name. I'm otherwise occupied. Huh? <laughs> My stars and garters, is that really normal? What is that dire stench? Normal? You look like you just crawled out of a garbage bin. <laughs> Meow. Meow. That is just the kind of thing I wanted to see. A bold new look. A whole new kind of cute. What's he get? What's he get? I think you just may be my pick. What do you say to that? <laughs> I love it! This is mm, superb. Nom, nom, nom. And I was wrong. There are 38 items, and the prime rib is medium well. Cat, give me that lemon meringue pie. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the chocolate cream pie. That was the lemon meringue pie. Get him! Stop with that cat! Today, we mark a new era in cuteness. A new standard of thinking outside the cute box. <laughs> Imagine, I'm not only the cutest cat in the whole wide world, I'm also the uncutest. And so it is with great pride. And for a medium-sized fee. That I am proud to name the winner of the contest as... Stop with that cat! <laughs> <laughs> You! <laughs> you have destroyed all concepts of the old cuteness! <laughs> That's my crown! I'm uncute! I'm so uncute, uncute! Garfield, I was supposed to win! Look at me! This is it, uncuteness, loser! Hey! You are an absolute mess! Hey, you don't look so good yourself, fella. Oh well, at least I'll have six months of no Nermal. Please fasten your seatbelts. We will be landing shortly in Greenland, where the current temperature is 50 degrees below zero.
50 degrees below zero. I don't even want my ice cream that cold. Let me alone. I just have to remember, 6,000 miles away from Nermal, six whole months of, of peace and quiet. Hello, Garfield. Nermal? No, you're not normal. Who are you? I'm Thermal. I won the cutest cat competition in Canada. And I am Thermal. I won the cutest cat competition in Mexico. And uh, I am Wilma. I won the cutest cat competition in Japan. You mean? Yes. We all want trips here to Greenland in our local cutest cat competitions. And we'll all keep you company here for the entire six months, eh? Caramba! He is not so very cute. Yes, how he won is incomprehensible. I can stop off for a day or two and recharge. <laughs> Earth? What's to do on Earth? Most boring planet in the galaxy. Makes Trisector Blue seem like a bleen festival, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, I guess it'll do. I mean, it's on the way. be home any minute now and he'll make dinner. I wish he'd hurry. I haven't eaten in <laughs> two hours, 15 minutes, and three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Here's John. He went to apply for cartooning work. You'll be able to tell by the look on his face if he got hired or not. Ooh, that looks like a knot to me. I'll have dinner on the table soon, guys. Oh, soon is not soon enough. Can you make soon sooner? I don't know why we're rushing him. Have you noticed how bad John's cooking has been lately? Especially when he's out of work and dejected. Sometimes it's hard to tell what it is he's serving. What do you think it is, boy? Meat, fish, or pasta? Hmm. I'm thinking chicken chow mein or maybe chocolate pudding. Or both mixed together. I think I need an emergency banana. There must be somebody out there who wants to hire a cartoonist. John Arbuckle. Arbuckle, Eddie Gourmand here. You know me. Well, the world's greatest food critic and all around cool person. Now listen, I was told you are a cartoonist. Y yes, I was. I, I mean, I am. Well, I need one I can pay a fabulous salary to to do drawings in my cookbook. Fabulous salary? But I have to ask you, Arbuckle, are you a good cook? You want to know if I'm a good cook? <laughs> I have some thoughts on the matter. Well, yes, I'm an excellent cook. Those are not my thoughts. Tell you what, I'll come to dinner tonight at your house. If I like what you serve, the job and the fabulous salary are yours. You have my address? Mm-hmm. Good. See you tonight at 8. Garfield, I'm going to get a job with a fabulous salary. I knew you could do it. All I have to do is cook a great dinner. I knew you couldn't do it. Now, what do I need? Oh, ingredients! I have to go to the market and buy ingredients! Uh, see you soon! <laughs> <laughs> Even his bananas aren't that good. <laughs> uh, 
I forgot. They have gravity on this planet. Let's see what's around here. House! Trees? I better hide my spacecraft. <laughs> How bad this is? Even I won't eat it. You're darn right that's pretty bad. That smell. That smells just like the corrugated uranium my mother used to make. You like that fella? Highly obese cat. Best food I've had in the galaxy. Well, if you want more, the dog's not going to eat his either. <laughs> Let me at it. You know, Odie, I've been hungry, but I don't think I've ever been that hungry. Let's see if John left any more of that stuff on the stove. The more of it our friend here eats, the less we'll have to finish. Lori! I could get to like this Earth place if only it didn't have all this gravity. Yeah, gravity. Earth is lousy with it. We interrupt this Garfield cartoon to bring you this educational moment. Tell them not to worry, it'll be quick. Don't worry, it'll be quick. Thank you. This is for those of you who don't know what gravity is. Gravity is a natural phenomenon by which objects with mass attract one another. I'll repeat that because I don't understand it either. It has something to do with how big objects attract littler objects. The Earth is a big object, so smaller objects are attracted to it. History says that gravity was first figured out by a man named Isaac Newton back in the 17th century. They say it happened when an apple fell on his head. Well, that's not exactly how it happened. I say, old chap, how about a spot of dinner for your pussycat? Hmm. It would seem I have to take matters into my own paws. Apples. Well, they're not exactly lasagna, but they'll do. Ah, there we go. What happened? I was asleep and you fell down, my fine pussycat. Hmm. I wonder why you did not fall up. Could it be the force of gravity? And so, in conclusion, gravity is why things fall down and go boom. And so Isaac Newton formulated his theory of how gravity works. And why we do not all float away from this planet. He became world famous, and of course his cat didn't get a bit of credit. So that's what gravity is, and why it's a good thing to have. This concludes the educational portion of our program. Don't worry, we won't have another one until next season or maybe the one after that. Our story resumes. I like all this gravity. All this walking on the floor. Without gravity, I feel so free. Time to use the old portable gravity elimination device. <laughs> Just like home. John had a cake in the oven? His last one was like lead. I hope this one is light. Hey, not bad. Odie, stop kidding around. You're a dog, Odie. Dogs can't fly. No, you can't. Any more than cats can fly. Which we can't do either, so stop. Floating around like that. Odie, is this one of those hokey dream sequences where we do on the show every once in a while? I don't either. Hey, Odie, look. I'm not falling. <laughs> Give it a try. Oh, I lost track of the time and spent too long at the market. I won't get home in time to cook Mr. Gorman the great meal that will give me that fabulous salary. Maybe Garfield and Odie will entertain him until I get there. Float over there and 
see who that is. Open up, Arbuckle. It's me. It's eight, and I don't like being kept waiting at mealtime. <gasps> oh, no. Mr. Broman is here already. I'll run around and go in the back door. Garfield! Hey, John. I found something that's almost as much fun as sleeping or eating. My tomatoes! My carrots! My rotabagas! I think John's too heavy to float like this. Uh, I wonder if my generator bank is recharged yet. Arbuckle, what is going on? Arbuckle, is my dinner ready? This place is getting crowded. This might be a good time to go check. Better turn off the old gravity eliminator. Uh -oh. oh, what a beautiful job of setting the table. Huh? What a fine way of tossing a salad. What a bad way of landing on your head. Oh, Ooh. and look at this stir fry. I can already see how perfectly yummy it will be after you heat it up. Heat it up? Oh, yes, heat it up. <laughs> I'm about to heat it up, Mr. Broman. Good. And I'll start on your splendid salad while you do. All charged up and ready to go. I keep telling you, Odie, I have no idea what happened. But I think I know who does. Hey, you! Yoo-hoo! I thought it might be you. What happened in the house? That was your doing. Guilty. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey, the food was great. If I come back someday, can I have that again? Can you make us float again? It's a deal. Bye! Bye! Wow, that was amazing. I never would have believed it. No, not floating. Somebody liking John's cooking. Our bottle, uh -oh. this is delicious! The stir fry is ready, Mr. Gorman. Oh, and it smells divine. You are so hired. I won't just pay you a fabulous salary, <laughs> I'll pay you a super fabulous salary. <laughs> yeah, two somebody's like John's cooking. Well, it just goes to show, Odie. Sometimes it all works out. Hurry back, my friend. I thought that was me inside being fed. <sighs> I wish it was. My position in life has been usurped. That's a fancy word meaning purloined, stolen. And you know who stole it? This guy. Eddie Gourmand, the famous restaurant critic. You remember him? He was on six episodes last season. You see, he lost his TV show and, well, I'll start at the top. It started with one of my favorite TV shows. At Botticelli's Italian Bistro, they have a whole new way of making lasagna. Lasagna didn't need any improvement. It was perfect the way it was. They also have a lovely rigatoni bonitas. Oh, and the catalani stuffed with mozzarella. An hour of fattening foods every night. Who wouldn't consider this a must-see television? Amazingly, the guy who ran a TV station. This food is just a die from. It sure is. All those calories, all that cholesterol. Right after the show, Eddie got the bad news. But why? Mr. Station Manager, sir, why? Because 
People shouldn't be eating the kind of fattening meals you encourage. They should be eating what I eat. Vegan chicken made out of soybeans, brown rice, organic sprouts with a wheat germ shake mixed with goat's milk yogurt. Uh, if I could just ask one tiny question. Is any of this food? Of oh, course it's food! It's good food! Healthy food! The kind of food that makes your body say, thank you for taking such good care of me! Well, I, I suppose if you melted some cheese over it and deep fried it. Gorman! Do you know what people wind up looking like when they eat the food you recommend? No, what? This! And so Eddie Gorman was replaced. <laughs> A program normally seen in this time slot, Simply Fabulous Dining with Eddie Gourmand, will never be seen again. So we can bring you this new, much better for you program. Good evening. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the benefits of eating tofu. There are none. And so, he was fired. The guy took it hard. This went on for days and days. <laughs> Here you go, Mr. Gourmand. One nice hot Vito's special, just for you. Oh, thank you, Vito. <laughs> that was the most delicious pizza I ever ate. Oh, hey, then uh, maybe you mention a Vito's pizzeria on your show sometime? <laughs> Finally, Eddie wound up where all people who can't control their emotions wind up. Sitting behind me in a movie. <laughs> After ruining the film and getting tears in my popcorn, he apologized. Oh, I've been like this since I lost my show, Mr. Arbuckle. <laughs> Feeling sorry for the guy, Pup? <laughs> yeah, me too. I just hope John doesn't do something foolish like invite him over for dinner. Eddie, why don't you come over tonight and have dinner with us? <laughs> oh, that would be too, too wonderful, Mr. Arbuckle. Great! I'll even make my special recipe for meatloaf. Hey, doesn't that poor guy have enough problems? That evening, John learned why you should never invite a food critic to your house. Everything looks positively scrumptious, Mr. Arbuckle. Oh, this meatloaf looks good enough to eat. I'll have some of this and some of this and some of this and all of this, and then I'll have this. Oh, this. <laughs> Oh, this is utterly divine! Huh? Odie, are you getting any food? <laughs> Me neither. Let's go. Another good reason never to invite a food critic to dinner. They tend to rate what they eat. Mm, I'd give the meatloaf two stars. The mashed potatoes need more butter, so they get one star. But four stars for the gravy! Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the gravy. It could have used more flour, but otherwise it was... <laughs> Who threw that banana peel on the walk? <laughs> Mr. Gourmand, are you all right? No, no. Get, get me a doctor. I'll call a doctor. And some shrimp chow mein. I'll call a Chinese restaurant. And a large mushroom pizza with pepperoni on half. I'll call Vito. <laughs> Amazingly, the doctor arrived before the shrimp chow mein or the pizza. Better keep him here until his foot heals. How long do you think that will be, doctor? Oh, not more than a few months. Goodbye. A few months? Oh, Mr. Roman, wouldn't you be more comfortable at home or in a nice hospital? You take care of me, Mr. Arbuckle, or I'll sue you for everything you own. 
Except the cat. <laughs> now, get me a grilled cheese sandwich. One grilled cheese sandwich coming up. Chris <laughs> potato chips, the ripple cut coin. Ripple cut potato chips, right. And I want a pickle with that. Uh, that's how it started. Then it got worse. <laughs> Hello? Bye, Buckle. It's two minutes past five in the a.m. and I am looking for my breakfast. I must have syrup. 18 kinds if you have them. If not, go out and buy them. Oh, and I'd like eggs. Fried, boiled, scrambled, and painted with lovely designs for Easter. There was no food for me? In short, Eddie had started to remind me of that greedy, impatient, lazy creature. Oh, let's see, what's it called? Oh, right. <laughs> me. Uh-huh. Yeah. To make a healthy chocolate cake, use no chocolate. Instead, we'll use organic yeast spores and granola. Turn it off. Turn it off. Huh? Sorry, Mr. Gourmand. I guess it upsets you to see the show that replaced yours. <laughs> but mainly the sight of all that disgusting healthy food. I can't stand uh, healthy food. It's the cat so has an idea. <gasps> Great show today, sir. At the latest ratings are in. What? I only got a three rating? Well, you only had three viewers. As much as I might hate it, I've got to get Eddie Gorman back. Arbuckle! Arbuckle! I want my dinner! Bring me my dinner or I'll sue you! Sorry, Mr. Gromond. Here you go. Yeah, what is this? It's an artificial chicken patty made without chicken, but with artichoke flour and modified wheatgrass. When I asked for dinner, I should have specified food. This is food. It's all part of our new healthy living program. Let's go, boys. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. You can tell how desperate I am to get rid of Eddie. I'm actually doing this. Eddie, we're going to start you with a hundred sit-ups. You do nothing of the sort. And if you're not going to get my dinner, I'm going to get it for myself. Oh. Bacon cheeseburger with extra bacon, extra cheese, and extra burger. <gasps> there's no food. Wait, there's one thing to eat in here. I'm saved. It's it's vegetarian meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for the 50 mile hike? No, no, I, I can't survive in this house any longer! Yeah, I just found the house. I left the address in his voicemail in case anyone wanted to forward any burritos. Yeah, I've got to get him to come back. <gasps> Mr. Station Manager, sir! Eddie, I want you to come back to your old job. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Does that mean you won't come back to the station? Oh, no, no, no. I'll be back on the air tomorrow. It's just that right this minute I have an emergency need for a buffet. Garfield, your idea was brilliant. Ideas are always brilliant when I'm the guy who has them. Let's go celebrate. I'm going to make every one of your favorite foods, Garfield. <laughs> Mr. Orbo. I'm sorry he caused so much trouble for you. Oh, that's fine. Hey, Mr. Station Manager, sir. Don't do it. Would you like to join us for dinner? He yeah. did it. Thanks, but I don't eat this kind of stuff. You know how many calories are in those steaks and the fat grams and... I mean, uh, well, it smells tempting, but... Oh, maybe one bite wouldn't hurt. <laughs> oh, you know what cholesterol can do to you? And carbonated drinks? I only drink... Hey, this is good. Harbuckle. Get me some honey! Right away. Oh, I don't want to try the french fries. So, uh, some ketchup. Also right away. And I don't see any steak sauce. Steak sauce. I get it. Deja vu all over again. Looks like we're not getting anything to eat for the next few days. <laughs> and blitzes. I want blitzes the way my mother used to make them. Uh, I'll get your mother. <laughs> and do we have any chocolate cream pie for dessert?
Oh, hi. We're having a dinner party to celebrate. <laughs> well, it's kind of a neat story what we're celebrating, so why don't I tell you about it? It started yesterday. We're at Vito's and he was especially happy. <laughs> ah, one of Vito's is special for my favorite customers. You seem overjoyed today, Vito. Oh, I am. You know the great food critic, Ed Gourmand? Well, on his show today, he is going to give me another great review. <gasps> it is a time. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho. Today, I'm going to tell you about a place called Vito's Pizzeria. You listen to this man. He knows. It stinks. <laughs> Crap, disgusting pizza. The crust tastes like... Mm, paper. Yeah, a paper plate, only burnt. And don't get me started on that miserable excuse for cheese. It tastes like mud, but with less flavor. Also, I think the pepperoni is wretched. <laughs> still a great chef. Hey, how about making my cat ten lasagnas? Whoa. I shall never make lasagna again. The thing was, Eddie Gourmand wasn't just insulting Vito's fine cuisine. He was cranky about everything. That new hamburger stand on 7th Street. It stinks, too! In fact, all hamburger stands stink! And so does 7th Street! And the entire west end of town! And this show! And that ugly shirt my stage manager is wearing! It stinks! I quit! Whoa! What got into Eddie? That's what we wanted to know. He'll be so glad to see us. What do you want? I don't care what you want. Did you bring me anything? No? Well, then, just leave me alone. Don't you think that was kind of odd? Not really. It's uh, my standard greeting for normal. It turns hey. out we'd interrupted a call from Eddie's boss. All right, all right, if you insist, I'll go to this doctor, you know. Hey, I need you to drive me to see this doctor and step on it. Uh. Am I ever that annoying, Odie? Uh -uh. Don't answer that. So John drove Eddie to this doctor and we waited outside. Tell me, Mr. Gourmand, why are you so hostile lately? Hostile? What did you tell I was hostile? And by the way, this couch is uncomfortable and it's ugly and it's... Ah. Excuse me one moment, please. Who picked out these drapes? Something is bothering your friend, but I can't get him to tell me what it is. Isn't there anything you can do? He's usually not like this. There's one thing I can try. It's a new invention that lets us get inside the patient's brain. <gasps> Don't worry, boy. No one would ever get inside your brain. First of all, they'd have to find it. Oh. They waited until Eddie took his afternoon nap. Then they wheeled him into a lab and put this device on his head. Let me see if I have this straight. This machine lets you actually crawl into his memory? Well, not actually into it. I'm too large to fit down the psychic tunnel. It opens into the mind. If I were smaller, I could get down there. I'll just have to be. We'll go back into his memory and see what it is that's troubling him so. The psychic tunnel is opening. And this cat's going in for a close-up look. It felt kind of weird going through Eddie's mind, like falling into beef stroganoff without the noodles. And suddenly, there I was in his past. I wonder which one of these kids is Eddie. Show me the ball, someone, hurry! Yahoo! And there's my answer. 
He seems to be a most unusual child. When I grow up, I want to be a fireman. When I grow up, I want to be a nationally famous food critic. He seemed to be off to a good start. The tuna noodle casserole was a bit overcooked, and the carrots had a touch too much salt. But the tapioca pudding gets four stars. How did he learn so much about food? Hmm. More supper, Mom! More supper! Oh, that's how. Here, Eddie, dear! The roast turkey is done just the way you like it! Oh, the giblets are spectacular! Did you make your fabulous stuffing? Of course I made my best! Oh, and my award-winning biscuits that make your taste buds tingle! <laughs> oh, you're the best son in the world! <laughs> you are the best mother in the universe! This conversation is almost enough to kill your appetite. Hey, kitty! I don't know where you came from, but would you like to join me? There's plenty! <laughs> <laughs> Notice I said... Almost? <laughs> You're right! It's Garfield! Garfield! What are you doing inside Eddie's memory? You come out of there right now! No, I like it in here. <laughs> <laughs> More of your creamy, delicious mashed potatoes, Mommy! <laughs> oh, Eddie, dear, do, do you really think you should eat quite that much? They're so high in calories! <laughs> you won't give me everything I want? <laughs> you don't love me! <laughs> Get your mashed potatoes right away! <laughs> oh, here you are! Oh, mommy loves you! Oh, oh, and you'll want your gravy, too, won't you? Suddenly, I found myself in a Kale Force gravy storm, melted with little pieces of giblets. It blasted me clean out of Eddie's memory. <laughs> We seem to have tapped into a deep, painful memory for Mr. Gourmand. Why won't you feed me, Mommy? Don't you love your little Eddie? And there's the problem right there. He has some sort of problem with his mother not letting him eat whatever he wants? Apparently, that would appear to be what's making him so cranky. I didn't quite understand it either, but I knew what we had to do. Find Eddie's mother. Even John figured that out. We searched and finally, we located her. Ah, uh, Mama Gourmand's health food store? <laughs> Eddie's mother had a little shop over on 7th Avenue. I haven't seen my son in a couple of years. Does he still weigh as much as a small truck? A medium-sized one. What happened between the two of you? He called up and asked me to make him all his favorite foods for dinner. I said, sure, but I wasn't going to stuff him full of calories. I said I was going to feed him a healthy diet, and he screamed, you don't love me! And he hung up. As always, it was up to the wise cat to figure out what to do. And I did. <laughs> At the TV station, Eddie was getting ready to do his show. Good to have you back, Eddie. Ah, who cares what you think? And why are you still wearing that ugly shirt? There's someone here to see you. I have a show to do. I don't want to see anyone. Mama! What are you doing here? You came to apologize and to say you'll cook me all my favorite foods. I'll make you dinner, but I won't help you shorten your life by putting on weight. I want to keep you around as long as possible. I used to think giving you everything you wanted was a way to say, I love you. This is a much better way.
Well, that kind of ends our story. Eddie got back to being Eddie, and he gave Vito a good review. And for the best pizza in the world, go to Vito's. Just don't eat too much of it. I am back in the business. This must be because of Mr. Arbuckle and his cat. I shall take them a feast. In fact, he should be here any minute with it. <laughs> oh, Mama Gourmet is cooking dinner for all of us, including Eddie. Something healthy, she says. That's why I'm glad Vito's delivering food. My way of saying a thank you. And a fine way it is. I'll take those, Garfield. These are not on your diet. Just remember, it's for your own good. Okay, I'll try to remember that, but it's not gonna be easy.